Salam viewers, welcome to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses explicitly on current affairs pertaining to the African continent. And today we shall be focusing on a positive topic. My name is Case Kiwinda. The Blue Niles Basin covers 11 countries, namely Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Ethiopia, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan and Egypt. Nearly a quarter of a billion people rely on the water of the Nile and Ethiopia, where 60% of the Nile's waters come from, has plans to build a dam over this water to generate electricity. This dam will be Africa's biggest hydroelectric dam and it comes at the mere cost price of 5 billion US dollars. Now it will be 1800 meters long and 155 meters high and at this size it will be able to produce electricity with an excess of 6,000 megawatts. Currently the country is able to produce 4,000 megawatts and of course there is a shortage in the country and with this extra uh, excess of 6,000 megawatts coming on top of it, it is not only able to cater to the needs of the country but is also en enabling it to export to countries as far away as South Africa and Western Europe and currently the dam stands at completion of 60%. Ethiopia's dam is being built near the border with Sudan and building commenced in 2011. Now it is important to note that Egypt has been against the development of this dam. Now, thanks to the colonial era treaties signed in 1929 and 1959, the lion's share of the Blue Nile has been given to both Sudan and Egypt, with the latter even holding veto rights to whatever goes on upstream. And unfortunately, this project that is being done by Ethiopia is indeed upstream. Because of this, a treaty was signed in 2015 between the three uh, countries. Egypt, Ethiopia and Sudan, but Egypt signed this grudgingly, but with good reason, because 90% of the water that flows into Egypt comes from the Blue Nile. Well, as you know, there's always two sides to a coin, right? And a minimum of two sides to a story. Why am I bringing this up? Obviously, Egypt conducted some research into the effects this dam would have on their land. And according to a professor from the University of Cairo, 51% of farmland would be lost if this dam fill was done in a mere three years. He estimates that 17% would be lost if the dam fill was done spread over six years. According to uh, internal papers from the government, based on their studies, uh, per 1 billion cubic meters of water loss would affect 200,000 acres of cultivated land which in turn affects 1 million people, as one acre is shared by five people, according to a senior irrigation ministry official. He said this on basis of anonymity because he did not have the authority to share the figures. Egypt barely gets by with the water that it has. Let's put it this way, for Moses to escape in a straw basket this time round would be quite tough. Anyway, Egypt has one of the lowest per capita shares of water in the world. It is estimated at 660 cubic meters per person. And this strain is worsened due to inefficiency and waste. It is estimated that it will get worse because the population is expected to double in the next 50 years. But shortages will happen before that. And it is predicted to happen by the year 2025. And now to flip the coin, other experts claim that the building of the dam in Ethiopia and the filling of it will have little to no effects on the land in Egypt, especially if coordination is being done between the two countries and information is being shared whilst the dam in Ethiopia is being filled, making sure that the reservoir that Egypt has itself by Lake Nasser along the Nile will stay full enough to cater to the needs and demands of Egypt. Now the truth of the matter is that 60% of the water that fills the Blue Nile comes from Ethiopia and it is my personal opinion that Ethiopia has every right to use that water to improve the livelihood of its people, especially when most of its 102 million people live without electricity. On top of that, building this dam will not only create electricity but will also help cultivate the farmland in Ethiopia itself. That being said, it goes without saying that the fears 
of Egypt with regard to this project are real and they must be addressed. And I think this can be done through proper coordination between the three countries involved, Sudan, Ethiopia and Egypt. And by having this proper coordination, we can, be, we can guarantee that the reservoir by Lake Nasser will remain full enough to cater to the needs and demands of the Egyptian people. So tell me what you think of this project. Do you think that Ethiopia has every right to do what it's doing in building this dam? Do you think that it's a good thing for the region? Or do you think that maybe they're pushing their luck or their boundaries by building along the Nile that may affect the Nile? Do you think that Egypt's fears are justified or do you think that they should not be worried at all? And what do you think of their veto rights? I'm curious to hear from you what you think. And of course you can do so in the box below. As a side note or on top of that, I. I'm pleading to you to please like my videos, share my videos and subscribe because YouTube has made it a lot tougher to make money off of YouTube and I would like to continue doing so and of course make a little bit of money on the side. So please subscribe to me and share my video as much as possible. You can find me on the following platforms as well. Well, firstly here on YouTube itself, but I'm also to be found on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. My name is Case Kiwinda, until next time, bye bye now.